It's not noise thin enough. Those at the back, make some noise. Don't make me mention names. One more time, make some noise. <laughs> All right. Segundo, mi Jaime. Mendara me. Come on. Segundo, mi Jaime. Boo. I can't hear you singing with me. Segundo, mi Jaime. Come on. Mendara me. Let's go. Segundo, mi Jaime. You're not singing, oh, boo. Oh me, I'm calm. She no do me harm. They pay me, give am. Cause what? He go take do am. Let's go. What's it? Tet it, tet it, tet it, tet it, tet. Keep going. You know, it's plenty to test. One, two, three. Add them. Oh yeah. Make some noise for Sister Derby. Yeah, she's in the building. All right. Oh, I'm ready for you. I'm make some noise. Don't stop. 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 Oh. Hey, Darby. Hey, Sister Darby. Hey. Oh, come and give me a hug. Ice me like pure water. Squeeze me like pure water. Just drink me. Drink me. Okay. Welcome. A quick shout out to Bloom Bar. For hosting us this is our second one we're doing with them they're so amazing make sure you're buying some food and drinks from bloom bar sister derby you are so far away from me i know i wish i could knock your head at a point i know i know derby <laughs> let's let's bygones be bygones i beg you i want to get into something with you before we start sure is it good for you the oh. position of the mic is it good for you and no, it needs to come a bit okay. more inside. It has to go inside better. Yeah, deeper. Deeper. Yeah. Okay. I love this girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm going to prepare my vocals for this one. <laughs> Life is a bitch, but I want a trophy. African mermaid like Sister Derby. Balling like LeBron, balling like I'm Kobe. Till up your number, your mommy Kobe. Go. Sister Derby, but don't Father ever call me chef. chef. Not cooking for you, not cleaning, cleaning up, up your mess, mess, not dealing with your stress, stress. make you know, make a vex. What? Continue. No time for mind games unless you they play chess. Go on. Bitches hate on me because I'm such a trophy. trophy. I know they watch time unless it be rolling. Moving mad, mad, mad. mad. This, this is sad, 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 sad. Like my bag, bag, bag loaded with cash, cash, cash. Come on, make some noise! Derby, that verse is fire. You know what you were giving me? You were giving me Ice Spice meets Cardi B. Really? Yeah. It was so nice. Woo. <laughs> anyway, before we get into like my real question, I just want to clear this out of the way. Okay. I saw on Instagram, Medical says he called you um, about this, right? What was the decision-making process like, okay? <gasps> when he says, Derby, I made a song. I hear you on it. Do you want to come on in? What oh, was running through your head? Well, I was like, let me listen to the song. Okay. And then I liked the song. I immediately got caught a vibe to it. So I think within like three days, I had the verse ready. Three days? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I just sent it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that but was what, it. Like, I mean, you, so you guys are on good terms? No comments. No comments. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> no. I mean, look, you're a businesswoman. So <laughs> I have my answer as to why... You said yes. That's how I see it. It's business or... Yeah, of course. I'm an artist. Right. And um, he's also an artist. We've made music together. We had Too Risky. Mm -hmm. And then some other songs that, you know... Some Panana. Exactly. Ooh, you know, that, that? Um, 
That's your toll tickets. My no toll, toll booth tickets. No, <laughs> this is my sponsor. Yeah, business so card. Um, yeah, for me as an artist, I've been called for a feature. I like the song. You know, I'm going to get royalties on it. And okay. Yeah, it's work. So I just did. Put your hands I together to for do. the business mogul, that is Sister Derby. <laughs> So, you know, I was going to ask you, like, where your interest for show business came from. But I did some research and I found some really interesting things. Sister Derby, in 1995, you walked the runway at Kida Fest. <laughs> Girl, you were modeling way back. Yes. So. And then in 1996, you were in the refresh adverts for Aztec. Yes. And then you ended up in Shashamali's music video for Seeking Good, Seeking Good and Lacking that was, Bad. That was when I was 14. So I don't even know what year that was. I saw you wearing some cabin seats and you had the low cut and you were sitting <laughs> under the tree. Hey, cheeky. Yeah, so, um, okay, so I've always liked, um, you know, entertainment. It's always been a hobby. So even after school, I would, you know, give my mother pressure to go and drop me off at the National Theatre. I wasn't getting paid. I didn't, you know, have like an end goal. I mean, at mm -hmm. that age, you, you know, I just found it fun. So no matter how hungry and tired I was after school, I'll tell her that, oh, please, I really want to go to the National Theatre. Because over there, they were teaching... Um, catwalking, <laughs> dancing, what we used to call formation dancing, hey. choreography and stuff. So I, I always just was attracted to that. Right. And that is how I met people that, you know, linked me to the fashion world. Those days it was Jimmy Delaja and Maoli. Is it uh, Maoli? Maoli Okujetu. Is it Okujetu? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. Y'all so, remember MKOGH? Who had something from MKOGH? Raise your hand. Let me see. <laughs> Oh, shame on you. <laughs> okay, so you met cool people. Uh huh. Yeah, like people in the fashion industry at that time. And I was very young. I think I was about um, 11. Oh, okay. Yes. During that time, I was doing a lot of, let's say, extracurricular activities. I was doing ballet. I also took um, a singing class, but it was for the choir. Right. And even that, I didn't plan on, you know, doing music. It was just, uh, I just always liked doing stuff like that. Mm. So um, I ended up, being one of the, how do you call it? Um, I don't Contestants. know. No, no. Uh, a lot of things. Wait. <laughs> one of the dancers for Golden Tulip. Accra. Oh, really? Yes. We had like a, a dance group and we used to dance for playback. Do you remember there was the Golden playback Tulip show. playback show? Yes. Yes. And I was in a group called Butterfly Seven. Oh. Yes. Was that inspired by Mariah? I don't know. I didn't name the group though. No, it was <laughs> named by Golden Tulip. Okay. Like okay. The management. Yes. All right. So my friends and I were a group of girls after school. We'll go and, you know, rehearse and rehearse. We had a teacher and we would dance. So I think I took part in 95 and 96. And I think in, um, I think in 96, no, I think 95, sorry, when I was 11. Don't worry, I'm bad at math too. Yeah, I, I modeled for a bridal um, designer. Okay. And I had to walk down the runway with a very popular guy at the time. He was like the hot cake. What was his name? Johnny Green. Minkaino. <laughs> Do you guys know Johnny Green? Anyway. Don't yeah, worry, Johnny we will Green. not age shame you he if you know Johnny Green. Johnny Green was in Morningstar and... And he was like hot, not only because of his looks. They said he was Rollins's nephew. Oh, okay. Yes, right. but at that age, I was like, Eric, about boys. So mm. we walked down the runway together as um, bride and groom. I yeah. was only 11 and he held my waist and I cried after that. Oh, my. And told the designer and everyone in charge that, hey, Johnny Green held my waist. waist. I don't like that. Uh -huh. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was angry. <laughs> and then another highlight of you know, being a part of the playback show was that we had rehearsed and rehearsed for months mm -hmm. to um, Brandy's song, I Wanna Be Down. I Wanna Be... Going yeah, 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 I know that song. Through. And on the final day, the DJ played the remix. Ooh. So we're all confused. It was messed up. And we're still trying to do the butterfly dance oh. and the bagel. <laughs> and then instead of the singing part, it was rap because she had featured some Somebody. artists on it. Yeah, so... I'll never forget that. Too bad. Yep. So aside that, I took part in Kid Affairs. Uh -huh. I was modeling. Um, also, with Kid Affairs, one highlight was the fact that I was going on stage. No, if I say this, Ghana Media, not they'll us. They'll pick it up. They'll say, <laughs> anyway. They'll pick it up. So they'll talk about us. <laughs> no, Should no, she say they'll it? They'll talk about it in a wrong way. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway. So I was going on stage and at last minute, I realized I didn't have lipstick on. So my best friend who had like her red lipstick on, 
Then we were about 12, 13. She came and gave me a big smooch. So I get some of the lipstick. Hey. And then I, hey, who said A? Hey? Me. You now. I said it. <laughs> I mean, who said who they cut our side, you know? <laughs> and I remember for that show, I was wearing an outfit with wings. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Delaja was really out, like his style was out of this world. We were wearing clothes made from rubber, like plastic, see-through. Okay. Like he was really ahead of his time then. Back then, yeah. Yes, and I remember with these wings, one girl, I don't know, I think she didn't like me. She like walked into me and then the wing went crooked. Yeah. Oh, great way. <laughs> Yes, like and I also took part in Fun World, Recognize. All hey, this was in the 90s. Sister Derby! It's, yeah, so this was just a hobby. Uh, this was just a hobby. And um, you know the rest, right? I know the rest. Oh, yeah, but I don't want to go in, too much. So I don't want to go into too much detail. It's fine. Yeah. I will yeah. lead you through. Okay, Thank okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I know that um, your mom comes from Romania. Yes. And you also grew up with, what, six siblings? Or there are five siblings. We are six. Um, okay, so from my dad we are six, mm -hmm. but from my mother and father we are three. Right. However, um, my sister. Um, okay, so from my mom I have two older brothers and myself, and then from my dad I have a sister. So she kind of grew up with us since she was like two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so she even understood Romanian in the house. That's Angela. Oh, okay. And she had a brother, but most of the time he was at his um, auntie's place. Mm. But Angela was mo most of the time with, with my you. mom and my brothers. Okay. Yes. Which I wanted to ask you, yeah. how much of um, you, uh -huh. or should I say, what is the Romanian influence in you? Because you know, mom is from Romania. I know you go there every now and then. Yes. I was actually having this conversation with... Someone recently, mm -hmm. I don't remember who, but my, my close friends, I think it was Yakutu and her husband or something. And um, we, were, we were saying, oh, how much of German is in Ya? Because Ya is mixed like myself, Ghanaian German, but she lived most of her life in Germany, where I lived most of my life in Ghana. However, the person that you know, was analyzing this was like, oh, we see the Romanian in you because you are organized, you are you know, serious. Romanians are organized and serious? Well, my mother is. is like, that, very serious, organized, calculated. But is it just honest. her? When you go to Romania, is everybody serious? Most, most. I mean, Romania is known for, like, a lot of people go there for um, their education. So, oh, okay. to study engineering and to study oh, okay. medicine. Oh. That's how my father met my mom. Oh, so he, he went got, to learn. He, yeah, he got a scholarship to go and study engineering. He did petrochemical engineering in my mother's town. Okay. So the town is called Ployesh. It's the same way like how we have Tema. It's an industrial town. Yes. Yeah, so it's like a small town. But it's about 45 minutes from the capital, which is Bucharest. But my mom studied at um, the University of Economics in Bucharest. But because she was living in this town where my dad went to school, apparently he was throwing the hottest parties and he was like... Hey. So the entertainment vibe comes from your maybe, dad. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, that's how they met. And then she, you know, even though at that time, you know, communist time, being with a black person was something else. But wasn't really it. allowed. Well. Uh, so you, do you guys see, you know, the, the, <laughs> you see where it comes from, right? You're oh, even making me think about these things. I've never thought about it this. Is, yeah, yeah, we do stimulating <laughs> conversations over here. Hey. <laughs> well, I want to know. By the way, I like the guys in the front here. I'm you you feeling, like I'm that? Feeling right? Make some noise. I'm feeling their vibe. <laughs> yes, come on. Yes, yeah, so um, you know, she um, came back with him to Ghana, and she has a lot of stories. She said, um, for days and days, she kept asking, "Where are the oranges? Where are the oranges?" Why? Who told her about oranges? And my dad was like, "Ah, but we've been passing by oranges all along." She didn't understand that the oranges here were green. Oh, so she she, she kept wondering <laughs> where they were, and um, I mean, her parents were not really happy about the whole situation. Even when uh, my grandmother, her mom came to visit, at that time, they wouldn't allow like a full Romanian couple to travel to a place like Africa at the same time or mm. any place. Mm -hmm. Only one would have to go. So my grandmother came, she left, and then my granddad could come and visit. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, that's very really interesting, Derry. But I want to get into Miss Malaika. Okay. How did that happen? Um, okay, so Miss Malaika, then I was in KNUST. Mm -hmm. I was in my first year. I was a publishing student. I specialized in graphic design and illustration. Okay. And during that time, um, some people came on campus and said they were recruiting girls for a pageant. 
Mm -hmm. And this was going to be the second time Miss Malaika was being held. This was in 2004. Yes. The first one, I think, was in 2003. Mm -hmm. So they came to call me and I had read about it. It said, oh, of African origin, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was telling my roommates that, oh, I was telling the chaperone that, oh, I know I don't win because light skin, skin. have cold... Those things. And they're like... That, around that time, th- this phrase was popular. Something like that. Eh. Eh. You should have had Vim. Colorism was eh, at no. peak. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I didn't have Vim, but you know, it says of African origin. And of course, in Africa, we have people of all types of complexions, mm-hmm. but it's still, you know, Africa is still stereotypically seen as, oh, dark skin. You get yeah. what I'm saying? And I know, I know as Ghanaians, so <laughs> I didn't want to do it. Right. And then my roommate, Kukwa, was like, oh, Debbie, it's fun. You get to travel within Ghana, but still. <laughs> oh, you get to travel, touristic places. Me too, I liked that. I was imagining canoe, water, and things. So I was like, oh. <laughs> and then the chaperone came up to me. I was like, hey, why don't you want to do it? Ah, but you are Ghanaian. I be your name is Osubon. So I was like, yeah. yeah. I be you have Ghanaian passports. I'm yeah. like, yeah, but still. Somebody was like, no, 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 do it, do it. So since Kukwa said, oh, you travel and it's fun. And they put you in a nice house at Trasaco and things. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. Let me take part in it. So I took part in Miss Malaika, and at a point in the house, um, the boss came, of Chatter House came and said to me, Debbie, there's a total of, a total of 120,000 votes, and you are leading with 80,000. Hey. So don't slack, the blah, 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 right? And then the final comes, the finale comes, and then I'm second. Yeah. So what, first runner up. Is it first or second runner-up? Yeah, yeah, first, first, runner, yeah, first okay. runner-up. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was second, and I've never heard about the winners were about since. <laughs> Shay! <laughs> Do we know who she is? Who won? 2004, Miss Malika, what's her name? Oh, okay. But there's what, some... What? what? Someone, a lady said something. Somebody said her name. No, they were saying the wrong name. I wanted to hear the wrong name. I uh, mean, I didn't hear. But Debbie, yes. I heard you made $10,000 on OnlyFans. How are you, what are you selling over there? Well, subscribe and see. Oh, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's that? No, so please, that's not what I said. So um, I, I told the host that uh-huh. in the first two and a half, I think I said three, three months. months. But in the first two and a half months, Mm-hmm. I made eleven thousand dollars. Yes. Uh huh. But we want to know what you are selling on OnlyFans. Oh, things to make boys happy. Oh, okay. What's yes. your OnlyFans name? Um, Sister Derby. Okay. Yeah. Y'all know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know, after Miss Malaika, I noticed that I was seeing you in music videos. I was seeing, hey, then you come in the music, you have shaved your hair half. Sometimes, you know, like you were a girl about town. You were, you know, the girly. Yeah, the, the half shave thing. I copied, well, I got inspiration Cassie. from Cassie. I yeah, knew how it. Do you know? Okay. No, because during that time, after I shaved half of my hair, I went to Lagos to chill. And then when I entered the club, hey, see this one, oh, now Rihanna, oh, now you say Rihanna. And I was annoyed because I was like, no, I copied Cassie. Cassie, no? yeah. <laughs> I love Rihanna, but it was just paining me that they were, they were not getting computer. it right. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so like, what was that? You know, when you were doing a lot of these cameos and stuff in music videos, at that time, what were you establishing yourself as? Okay, so the music video thing started a long time ago. Remember you said you saw me in Sasha, Sasha Mali, Mali's yeah. video. Um, I don't know, but like people that knew me would always call me for such things, right? Mm. Like... Um, I was, even an, I was an usher in my church. At, yeah, I even forgot that. I can't believe it. You're an usher. I was an usher at church, yeah. um, Christ the King Parish, right? Okay. And then the lady, yes, the lady that was in charge of us, Rita, she was actually my distant cousin. I found out later. She's Rita Ousu. Okay. Um, Rita was the one that said, that put me in the video with Sasha Mani. Sasha Mani. Okay, uh-huh. okay. So things just happened, happened like that. And when. Yes. And. Um, after KNUST, after my first degree, mm-hmm. it was 2007. So I was in KNUST from 2003 to 2007, right? Four years. So 2007, when I finished, I said, Media, I'm tired of school. I want to make money. I want to make money. And at that time, Romania had joined the EU. Okay. So Romania and Bulgaria were the last countries to join the EU. I'll be poverty things. 
I lo- listen, this is like Ghana. social studies class, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, EU, I think it's a- Bulgaria. <laughs> oh, what's the mosquito? The I mosquitoes. Think. Oh my god. Go away. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh, so they had joined the EU. So I wanted to go to the UK to go and work. Uh huh. So that was the plan. Mm. And I have, well, I had an aunt and uncle living there. So my dad's sister and her husband, right? So I don't know how, but I went to stay with them and I told them that I wanted to work. But my uncle was um, very, you know, determined that, no, you should do a master's. You mm. should do a master's, right? So, um, that was a lot of pressure on my mom because she had to come up with this money. So I said, okay, no problem. I'll do a master's degree because I'm going to listen to my uncle. Like Mm -hmm. he has sense. He knows what he's talking about. He's actually the founder of Black History Month UK. Oh. And he's a Pan-Africanist. He's an incrumaist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I also learned a lot from him, but he's not blood related. It's, um, through marriage. Okay. Yes. But he's a really, you know, good guy. Mm. So, um... I said, okay, I'm going to listen to him. But I felt bad because it was my mom that was going to come up with the money. Pay for it. And then I was like, okay, I now have my Romanian passports. Romania is part of the EU. So maybe the fees wouldn't be as much. But then when I went to apply and register, they said to me, no, you should have lived in Europe for the past three to five years. And mm. I hadn't. So I had to pay More. the same fees an international student would we'll be pay, paying, which right. was a lot, right? Yeah, so... After my master's, even during my master's, I made, you know, Ghanaian friends there who were like upcoming fashion designers. So I would model for them Mm because it's always been like my passion and hobby, right? To model. Mm -hmm. And then I came to Ghana after completing my master's. I worked there for some time, but then the recession hit in 2008. So, um, So I did a degree in publishing again. Was this a a master's or... Sorry, a master's degree in in publishing, publishing. yes. And I specialized in printing, web design, and um, creative writing skills. Oh, okay. So you can do websites? Or is that not web design? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Websites, yes. You do websites? Website design and all that. I just haven't done it in a while. Okay. Yes. All right. So, yeah, I use Photoshop, Illustrator, even Quark Express. Do you know Quark Express? I do not. So when I was in tech, Quark Express was kind of like going out of the system, so I never wanted to learn it because it looked very archaic. And even at that time, we used to use those little box computers. In I'm class. sorry, that Quack Express sounds like a check check joint. <laughs> <laughs> An idea for a name for a yeah. check check joint. Yeah. And then when I was in uni in the UK, right, mm-hmm. I was also looking for work because now I could work because I was a student. You know, I had a student visa. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, oh. I had an EU passport <laughs> or whatever. So I was eligible to work. Right. So I'm like, hey, I need to work because Charlie, I need to be able to be buying some small, yes. small things. I can't be asking my mom for everything, right? Mm. Um, so I started working as a, I don't even know what the title was, but I was doing every odd job in my university. Oh, so like when new students come in, like helping to initiate them, take them at orientation. Right. And then I remember we used to have like some... some weird parties. I don't know what they were for, but it was for my department. I was the one they, the old white lady put me in charge of the food. Hey, you. <laughs> I think it was because I was very organized and right. calculated. Like, if you come and take one sandwich, you say, hey, no, everybody's taking one, <laughs> only you two. Put it down. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, like, I'm the type of person that will make sure everyone has and yeah. then I can give extra. Okay. Not the type of people that everyone will take one then you hoard the rest home. Yeah. No, me, I don't like food. Like, oh, do you get okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. But I, I just want everyone to be happy and everything to be done well. So I was yeah. in charge of that. Then at a point, I was helping as an assistant with a graphic design. So there was a graphic designer, there was a writer, everything. I would do like the surplus work. Mm. Yes. And um, the pay wasn't that bad. Which year was this? This was um, 2000 and, let's say 2008. Oh, okay. Because by then I had finished. But in 2009, that's when I wrote my dissertation and actually got the graduation certificate. Okay. If that makes sense. So the course was done by... Um, let's say by the end of 2008, and that's Mm -hmm. when there was a recession. So aside working at my university, I also got an internship at Financial Times UK. And there I was a junior graphic designer. And the lady I would report to, she was using Quark Express, which was strange. Like, it was crazy to me. She was this Asian lady. (laughs) So she was my, like, my immediate boss. Mm -hmm. And she would, you know, direct me on what to do. So it was kind of boring stuff, but it was interesting because I had gone from um, 
designing fun, creative Doing things. Doing parties. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, in talking no about parts. the graphic design oh, okay, part, okay. and then I had to do like very serious... Things for financial times. So boring, straight, squares, yeah. and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So, how, how, the, did, how did you get into the music videos, though? That's what uh -huh, I wanted to know. The music videos. <laughs> you see the story? You see, I'm yeah, detailed. Wait. I'm too yeah, detailed. Like, how did you get into the music videos? Because all of this is not in Ghana. No, no. So good. So then, I finished all that. During uh -huh. that time, I was doing those things also on the side. Uh -huh. So I come to Ghana... And on Facebook, Richie Mensa's mom is my friend. Links Entertainment. Why? <laughs> Why are you friends with Richie Mensa's mother on Facebook? Because his mother taught me in class three and I was her favorite um, student. student. Yeah, pupil. You were the teacher's pet. Pupil. Those times was, A that pupil. age is pupil. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, she wrote to me on Facebook and said, oh, Richie is doing a video. Please, do you mind, you know, being in the video to mm. support... And I said, oh, I don't mind. Oh, okay. So now I go on set for the music video and um, it's being directed by Gio, Famous Films. But, right, right. Yes. And in that music video, Gio made me play the role of two girls in the same video. So I mm. acted the role of like two different girls, mm. right? And then he said to me that, oh, I, do you do acting? I like the way you work. I like your work ethic. You are very serious. Do you do videos mm. and stuff? Do you do presenting? And I said, oh. I haven't done presenting before. He said, oh, would you like to try? I said, oh, no problem. And on the same set, Richie's manager at the time, Michael also asked me if I do acting and stuff. And I'm like, oh, not really. I've, I did drama and essay. That means they liked your work. What you were doing was nice. It was professional. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I mean, Gio said, oh, you are serious. You don't train your home like the other girls. You are down to earth. You right. are doing... The I mean, when I'm working, I'm working. Though. Of course. I I'm even more serious than the director. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I annoy them with that. So, right. um, okay. So, Michael said to me, oh, there's a commercial um, opening. Like a, a Is TV this the commercial. Vodafone one? Vodafone. Oh, do you guys remember the Vodafone advert with Fritz? Um, um, it was like, there was what, what was the thing? The short um, code thing. So, our sister set up set us up on a date, a blind yeah. date. It was Vodafone 3030. 3030, yes. And yeah. you were talking on the phone. But I had a problem with that advert. And I, I thought, know why. I'll tell you why. I also know why. I'll, I'll say it here because say it's important. It. Yeah, say it. But wait, so have I answered the first question? No, you have. You have. Music video. So, yeah. So, through Famous Films, I started doing... So, then they gave you the opportunities. Video. Great. Exactly. Okay, Vodafone adverts. Let's go. Yeah, so the Vodafone ad... Um, Okay, so... Um, it was the ending of the adverts, right? Nine dates. Yes. No, but the script. I had a problem with the script. Okay. okay. And I also had a problem with the director because I had just come back to Ghana. I had stopped perming my hair. I had stopped putting chemicals in my hair. And that was because um, I had watched Good Hair, the movie. One Love made me watch it. Mm. And after Isn't watching... it, Chris Rock? Yes. Uh, documentary about the, about the chemicals, hair and chemicals and right, right, fibros okay. and all that. So I'd been trying to stop, but it was not easy, right? But I hadn't relaxed my hair in like nine months. And mm -hmm. then I moved back to Ghana after school, right? Mm -hmm. After my master's. And they wanted me to go and relax hair. my hair. They wanted me to have like, I don't know, a, fo no, a foreign Those look. days, exotic, eh. like the straight, yes. long, I yeah, that was hair. in. Yeah. So yeah. um, I said, no, I didn't want to. He's like, why? Is it against your religion? What is that? This is the script. <laughs> Do you want to do the ad or not? And I felt bullied. I ended up relaxing my hair. So that was one issue I had. Now, the second issue, we are acting the commercial and um, my little sister in the commercial is supposed to say to the guy, it's like, I didn't really want to go on the blind date, obviously, because I didn't know the person. No, so my script is, I'm not too tall, I'm dark skin and I'm plump. Do you still want to meet me? Yes. And I told the director that... Even that time, I didn't know the word woke and those things. But I told the director, I'm not comfortable with saying this. I don't think it's right. And he was arguing with me, who do you think you are? You're always against everything. Uh, are you the one writing the script? He had written the script, Jason. I'm going to mention his name. <laughs> Call him out. I don't, I don't remember, Say I don't remember his, his name. I don't remember, I don't remember his last name. Okay. He's lucky. <laughs> and everyone on set was quiet. So it was just me. Right. It was just me, you know, talking against that. It, everyone was quiet. So I just said, okay, fine. This is what he said to me. This is what they were doing. Okay. 
So you went ahead with it. Anyway. I went ahead with it after the commercial was out. You know that commercial um, was played over like an eight week period. Yeah, bits and pieces. Bits and pieces, so yeah. that you look forward to. Uh huh. Yeah. So after like the tenth week, people started realizing and criticizing it. I mean, of course, I was bothered, but I wasn't so bothered because I didn't write the script. But I knew it was bad. Yeah. And I'm glad that he got you know kind of attacked for that. Mm. And he also went against my contract. Hey. He also went against my contract. Everything I had signed, um, they had gotten rid of that. They had gone to add some things like um, newsprint. A lot of things I hadn't oh, signed like the for. the use of your image and stuff. A lot of extra things. Oh. I got a lawyer. He now, this Jason guy now threatened me. Hey, Debbie. Hey, shh. Wow. Yes. That's a lot. Yeah, he said, you're not going to make it in this industry. You'll never make it. Blah, and blah, And this blah. was before Uncle Obama. Way before. Way this before. was 2010. Uncle Obama was 2012. 2014. 2012. 2012, okay. 2012 okay. yes. Um, yeah, so that's how I got into... All of that? Yes. Okay, yes. so let's look at your music, okay? Okay. So you had Uncle Obama. It was like an international hit, CNN interviews. Yes. First of all, who uh, did the choreography for Uncle Obama? Oh, I did it together with some girls. Yeah. I was yes. madly impressed. Oh, like, but do you know that the Banana Zonto dance uh -huh. was actually from the video director, King Lou? He came up, he with, came up with the move. The guy, he was like, we should do this oh. for the banana. The name was so you, Are you disappointed? No, it's the name. I was going to come to the name. Like, <laughs> where is it? I, my name is Sister Derby and I like to dance the Banana Zonto. I was like, I oh, so corny. I know, <laughs> so corny, but so corny works, right? Right. right yeah. yeah. They won't make a whisper my love for you, but me, I go shout to. Look in my eyes and hold my hand, baby, never ever doubt to. you there for me, I'm there for you. I lay my teeth, make me go down, so you there for me. Okay, Debbie, let's get into your questions, but I want to okay. remind you guys, we have Sincerely Crown merch at the back. There's a lovely lady, Sally. She's wearing one black tee with a logo on the breast pocket. You want to get one for yourself before you leave? Do it for us. Thank you. So first question. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I was talking about relationship status. So Sister Debbie, who they eat? Say their names. Ah! Even if I say they don't believe. They don't believe. Mm. Why would they believe? Why would they believe? They don't believe. You say what? Say the name. Nobody. Nobody. No. Nobody they eat. All right. Thank you. We'll move on. Hey, you people. What's go? Okay. How did Fela McAfee take your new feature with her husband? Wait, wait, wait. Who over here asked such a question? Who asked this question? I don't think they're gonna own up. Echo Barnes, was it you? <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, they want to know. How would I know? I know nothing about that person. Uh, how? Moving on. I don't remember being married to that person or <gasps> even being that person's friend. Okay. <laughs> you, uh, these are the things you like. Oh, yeah, no, no, they yeah, like yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um... <laughs> What, this is a, hey, I can't see this handwriting. No. Your inspiration, or oh, what is your inspiration behind boudoir shoots? <laughs> I can call it The, oh, the person wants Vim to do some. I uh, know. So give I them know. inspiration and Vim. Um, boudoir shoots look nice. Mm. Mine are tasteful. Right. They are classy. Mm. And also, um, the first photographer that asked me for a boudoir shoot, Amphor Connolly. Okay. He's so good at it. Yeah. So that was one of the reasons why I agreed to do, to it. do it. It's not like, honestly, it wasn't my idea. Mm. It wasn't my idea. So my first ever professional boudoir shoot was with Amphor Connolly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I yeah. hope you have your answer, whoever asked this question. All right. Somebody wants you to recite the national pledge. Oh, why? I don't know. Masa, masa, masa. <laughs> <laughs> you should, they should let the people at ECG recite, recite the pledge. Yes, oh. not me. <laughs> um, someone wants to know, is it true that you have OCD? I don't have... Like, OCD is a serious thing. Mm. I don't have OCD, but I like... You're organized. OCD is You're serious. Romanian. Like, if I really had OCD, I'll be cleaning this table right now. Right there, yeah. Yeah, but... um. 
just a tiny little drop of it yeah just a tiny drop but i try to control it because i know i can be annoying to people Mm. like if you come and visit me then i'm folding away things i'm clean i know it can be irritating or annoying so i try not to sometimes i just let things be. be yeah yeah I understand. Yeah. I, totally I, understand. I read a story of a lady. She wrote, I think, about 40 things before she died. She was on her cancer bed. And there were like 40 things she had listed that she was saying, if she had known, she wouldn't have cared about these things. Mm-hmm. And I read that in like 2007, 2008. Mm-hmm. So since then, I mean, I like things a certain way. But if it's not possible, I don't stress. I immediately improvise or find a solution. She said things like she would have never worried about spilling wine on her white carpet. You know, things. She was on her deathbed. So that made me realize that, Charlie, you don't have to stress your thing, your mind with some things. I don't know. I feel like, in rich respect, you know, it's cool. You are dying. So, yeah, the red ca- uh, wine on the white carpet. <laughs> wow, oh. you are evil. No, but like, if, no, let's be honest. If you are living and you have a white carpet, yeah. you will be worried about the red Yeah, but thing. maybe she was over worried maybe shouting at people because of that you know yeah but, fun sad, but mm, i mean yeah all right yeah. what's your secret to staying fit hey am i fit the way i'm sucking in the stomach really <laughs> i'm sweating <laughs> <laughs> breathe out breathe out okay so um honestly i try to watch what i eat as in portions Portion i actually make an effort right mm. um and i also try to watch what i eat and drink Mm. yeah because um it's not easy it's not easy going to the gym it's not easy Do you go to doing the gym? pilates sometimes on oh, and off okay. yeah so this we week d- this week i'm going to start swimming okay because someone has invited me okay yes so we're going to start swimming uh, i should say where and how people will join no i want to know who invited you oh it's a white girl from the or foundation oh okay. and so she's we we're talking about ah, the way i was not feeling fit and she also said it and she was like, we should swim. Where can we swim? Someone was mentioning campaign stick. And I said, hey, please, $100. <laughs> I had to say, yeah. No, Is so, that true? <laughs> so we decided that we'll go to, you know, Bema, Bema, Bema Camp. They have a training, like a swimming pool. Yeah. So you'll be serious. It's like you yeah. do laps. And it's very and it has affordable. Lanes. Yes. Yeah. So um, I have motivation. I have someone to go to with. with. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to do that. Because actually, the whole month of April, mm-hmm. the All Foundation is doing a lot of activities. They do a lot of upcycling. Well, please, what is that? The All Foundation. It's a no, foundation. No, upcycling. Oh, so upcycling. Um, basically, taking like old discarded garments and textiles and reusing them to create something. Reusing them creatively. And it's not recycling. It's upcycling. Upcycling. Oh, okay. With recycling, you take like old plastic bottles and mm. then they melt them and they make buckets and basins okay. and stuff. But with upcycling... Let's say you take a whole um, bunch of T-shirts. Instead of throwing them away, they shred them and they can use them to make like floor rugs. Oh, okay. They can, they can use them to stuff pillows, stuff cushions right. and stuff. Yeah. You learned, did you guys know what upcycling was? Did you learn it right now? But did you I'm, learn it right now? But I'm sure some of you actually upcycle without knowing it. So buying thrift is upcycling. Oh, okay. You are reusing and you are contributing to the environment. Yeah, you are saving the planet. In a way, cantamanto shopping. Shout that's out that's <laughs> actually upcycling. Yeah. Because sometimes you can buy something, then you cut it or you restyle it to yeah. suit you, right? Yeah. So that's upcycling. Oh. So they are doing something with swimming as well. And they want, they said, ah, Debbie, why don't you also swim? There's um the mermaid, so yeah, they are trying <laughs> to they are trying to within five years, one of their goals is to make the Kole Lagoon swimmable. Really? Hey, 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 hey. Yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> so really? Yes. So, um, at the moment, one lady, Yvette, uh-huh. she's um, swimming the whole Lake Volta. She swims six hours every day. She's already started. So, they said as part of the campaign, we should all swim like a portion. So, I said, hey, I have to get in shape. So, you are swimming in the I'm lake? I'm starting at Vema Camp. I might swim in the lake. I told them that I hope that place, the water is not stagnant. It's flowing. Uh, I that, don't you know why. No. I've been in lakes... We have something called, we have, there's a certain snail. Uh So if you swim in the stagnant water Mm -hmm. in the lakes. Why are you, primary school, didn't pay attention in class? No. eh? Agri can think, didn't pay attention. I hated agriculture, geography. You didn't like science. No, just English. (laughs) 
so, Sister Debbie, you are really teaching me a lot. What, yeah, are, what so, do the snails do? So they um, bore a hole in your skin and they plant an egg. Hey. And that causes bilharzia and oh. it can paralyze you. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm a bit so scared then, of that. Wait, but one love always swims in the lake and he hasn't gotten it, so I'm Without sure it's underwear. fine. Hey, that one is your concern. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go that to the one next. is your let's interest. Let's next me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says, you're so pretty. I want to make you free pink mermaid locks. And this is from Four, oh, wow. Four House on IG, where they're marketing and branding. Wow. Eh. Please, can she come and What's see What's the name again? At Four House. Can I have the locks pink? Yes. Or am I making the work difficult? No, that's what she said. I want to make you free pink mermaid. Oh, wow. Look. She said pink. Yes. Oh, then it's a deal. In time for the Little Mermaid premiere. Yes. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to swim with those. Maybe not too long. Well, we'll get tangled. Yeah, four but hours. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. And, 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 and big up to my makeup artist for today, Say Beauty. Say Beauty. Say Beauty Makeover. All right. For making me pretty. All right. So, Debbie, the last question, it seems to be a whole... No problem. It's, it's good. Two, uh, back and forth. It will, it will compensate for the other two. Which other two? Ah, the ones that you didn't like. The, the first... Those, the pledge. The pledge. Uh, what was that? <laughs> okay. It says, my boss is hitting on me. Hmm. I have lied to hide in the office oh. or dodge his advances. Oh. But nothing. I even wanted to come today and... Eh? I even wanted to come today and sit with me. No, he even, oh, sorry. He even wanted to come today and sit with me, a Gen Z, with a 50-year-old man. God forbid. The economy is hard. How do I ward off his advances while keeping my place in the office? P.S. He is my father's friend, so it is hard to avoid him. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. Sister Derby! What this is so do? complicated. Just throw the nigger a huge bail. Like, tell him that if he's not going to give you, like, 50,000 Ghana, he should stop. Like, it, that's in advance. So he should stop disturbing you. I like And even this. after he gives you that, stretch him because you are not for sale. Yeah, you are not for, a commodity. For him, even having the privilege of you being in that office and him admiring your beauty for free, he should put down the 50K. And after that, still nothing. Otherwise, you report him. I have nothing to add. Make some noise. Put your hands together. 